What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Let's navigate and aviate. So I just got this Aviate watch here. I really like that brand. It's all aviation inspired. It comes in this green nylon box here, little pleather Aviate on there. And then we have a flip here. And this watch is the, um, oh, it's gonna be called the Centenary Flyboy. But what makes this interesting is this is kind of the newest uh, issue on the Flyboy. And so a little microfiber cloth there. Oh, it even says Aviate on it, I like that. And you might know this brand, it's uh, related to uh, Spinnaker, it's one of the sister companies. Looks like we have a card here, and it looks like it's metal, man, that's cool. Uh, this is the 1980s limited edition, Aviate Centenary. So uh, that's what's kind of important about this, is that they actually released the limited edition 1920s version, 1940s version. Those watches are now sold out, and so what they have released now is a 1960s, kind of going in... 20 year increments and a 1980s version. And this is the 80s version here, I believe. Um, and this is kind of the dawn of the jet age, 60s to the 80s. And see here, ooh, interesting, win. But here's the watch, here's what we came to see. And this one is pretty cool looking, which is why I picked it up. So I just want to go ahead and unwrap as much as I can about it. As you can see, it says automatic on it, and that's because this watch is automatic. And so it is a wonderfully reliable Japanese Miyota movement. It is uh, 21 Jewel, and it is obviously an exhibition back there, and you can see it says Flyboy, 21 Jewels. You've got the round L, which is their logo, the Aviate logo. I like that you've got a little perlage on that center portion. You can see the uh, the mechanisms all inside there. Obviously I've been fooling around with this box so it's wound up because I haven't done anything else with it. 1980s laser etched, st all stainless steel construction, sapphire crystal, and water is into 50 atmospheres. So that's pretty nice screw down back. Just kind of nice that they do something with the, uh, the, the, the lobe there, which is pretty clever. And a beautiful brushed stainless steel case. It's very traditional. It's a 43 millimeter case so it's really a perfect size in my opinion. I think it's a perfect size and I'm always right. And you know, it actually has a little bit of like the ball R&R uh, &R watches to me. It really looks like um, kind of my limited edition uh, ball Santa Fe, I think. Santa Fe? One of the train inspired watches. So very similar. And I really like, you know, kind of some sharp edges here, but it's, so it's got a really nice kind of crisp look to it. You might be able to see here too that uh, the dial is really um, intricate and interesting. So the Aviate watches and what's really always kind of interested me on them is just how kind of incredible they look. If you check out some of my other videos where they really do some multi-layers to the dials are really crazy, like the Hawker Harrier and, and whatnot. You can see here we have some pebbling, some you know textured outer chapter ring here, and it's kind of a lower portion of the dial. You can see that and it says Centenary on there. And then we have what is a very much a raised secondary portion and probably not even attached, it doesn't look like. But the second hand here, which is kind of really interesting, you can see it's sweeping even though it's very, very small, indicative of the automatic movement. And then kind of like the Tag Heuer limited edition watch that I showed you before, it's only showing you the top half, but then it's showing you kind of the other end of that arm uh, when it uh, hits the horizon there. So I love that white and that black, all blue lettering. This is some that really, really clever. And so what you can see here is that longer arm is basically tracking this outer white chapter ring, and the shorter one is tracking the inner one. So you can tell at a glance, what part of the minute you're at, right? So if you if you needed that. So at the top there, it's kind of a um, kind of dead center. Cool, all right, hopefully you got that. I think I slaughtered that one. Nice outer chapter ring here, markings for all the seconds. And then you can see we have like basically these applied metal markers, a big uh, zero at the top, six at the bottom. You've got uh, some minutes marked at the five minute marks, and you can see how much lower they are on the sunk dot portion of the dial right there, kind of on the top there, and then sunk down. It's just really interesting to look at. Uh, and then you can actually see, I think, you can actually see the date window. So what, what's really interesting is this inner window here is slightly transparent, kind of translucent, because I can see the dates right there. 
And so it's kind of a cool look. I was actually gonna say with this line here, it's kind of like an uh, aviation gauge, um, you know, like a center line horizon gauge, something like that. But you can see where then uh, the date will rotate through here. And then you'll get the, uh, get it in that window right there, which is outlined in white as well. Now, I wanna show you the roundels on the crown here and it is knurled. I'm going to, nope, I guess maybe I don't have to screw it. Just pulls out. And if actually when it's in, because it's not a screw down crown, I can feel it winding the movement. So I'm just gonna pull it out here and get these hands out of the way. You can see here very much um, airplane inspired sword hands with pretty big loom on both of those. So should be very, very visible. Now, no loom I think on the second hand there. So if you, that's a really important to you, uh, probably no easy way to, to see that. And I'm not sure if there's an intermediate step here or anything. see oh so there is an intermediate step and that's going to change just the date and you can see that that disc in there moving as I change the date pretty cool all right and then it goes back in so that is really awesome I love the blue that is a really cool look it's matched with this um, this band which is a Cordura leather band it's Cordura on the outside here and then you can see leather on the inside so you'll still have that leather feel and then a brushed metal buckle which is obviously of super high quality as all the aviates always are i do like that the fact that the holes here on the bottom on this cordura are also aligned in leather on both sides so you don't have to worry about them fraying just a really nice looking watch and i will tell you that it's just a comfortable and it's casual and yet still has a nice formal look so i like watches that aren't too stuffy i mean if you want to get up in your penguin suit or your um your designer suit and wear a really fancy luxury watch great but look at this even with this blue and red shirt i think this is a perfect look man and 43 millimeters on my wrist i think is fantastic it's just a great size overall i know a lot of guys actually are down into like the the, the low 30s on um, millimeters in size preference but you know i've always tended to like something a little bit bigger like this it's just a little easier on the eyes and uh kind of shows off the watch a little more too. So really cool, I, did, I definitely dig this. Uh, the, the also, the nice thing about this watch is I think they're a really good value. Again, an automatic movement, really nice high quality. Um, Aviate watches I've always really been uh, really pleased with and it's under 350 bucks US. So check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description if you wanna get something limited edition, uh, commemorating aviation and a long history of uh, soaring in the blue skies, um, or maybe it just all that doesn't matter to you and you just like this because it's a nice looking watch. Well, check it out. I'll put a link to it. Peter Brown Panda, out.